In the middle of the barren expanse of the Nevada desert, an MMA fighter named Roy drives his car while shooting after robbers who have stolen something important, but his car loses control and is thrown off the road. This story actually started a few days ago, two brothers Danny and Joe were spending their day hunting deer in the middle of the desert, and when Joe got the perfect target, he shot with stunning precision. After the hunt is over, Danny excitedly expresses his desire to take their brother Roy on future hunt. However, Joe immediately felt displeased remembering Roy's habit of frequently getting into trouble with the law and often going to prison since joining the world of MMA. But Danny reminds Joe that Roy is still their brother who needs attention and support, no matter how complicated his past is. In the midst of the sparkling city of Las Vegas, Roy had just arrived in front of one of the arenas where he would compete that night. Jason greeted him with a joke about his habit of being late, but Roy confidently promised that he had trained hard and was truly ready to beat his opponent tonight. After looking everywhere, Jason found Roy busy with Lisa on the sofa even though there were only a few minutes left in the match. In the ensuing fight, Roy quickly knocked JD to the floor, then passionately approached Lisa to celebrate their victory with another heated kiss, but JD still had a strong fighting spirit and got back up, taking advantage of the moment when Roy was off guard to deliver a counterpunch that ultimately knocked Roy to the floor, defeating him. The defeat made their boss Julian really angry, especially because he had just lost millions of dollars that night due to Roy's carelessness. Julian believes that Roy is having too much fun with his girlfriend, which is distracting him from focusing on the match, so Julian takes the terrible step of capturing Lisa and ending her life before Roy's eyes. Roy felt heartbroken and angry, but Julian quickly reminded him of the power and wealth he possessed, creating a threat that Roy felt afraid to stand up to. Julian then took Roy to a warehouse filled with piles of pure diamonds from mining. Julian claims that the diamond is very rare and has a very high selling value. He ordered Roy to transport the diamonds from point A to point B using his truck, with the promise of a big payout after the job was done. Roy was intrigued by this offer, but still wondered why Julian had chosen him for the mission, instead of using his men which is equipped with complete weapons. Julian gave Roy three quite strong reasons. First, he acknowledged Roy's abilities as a truck driver who had an extraordinary track record. Second, the presence of Roy's two brothers who served in the military was considered a valuable help during the trip. The third reason is the large debt that Roy owes Julian. Julian also threatened that he would hurt his family and his brother-in-law if Roy dared to refuse this job. Feeling trapped in this situation, Roy had no other choice, so he killed his ego to ask Joe for help, but his calls were ignored. Meanwhile, James invites Danny to dinner with his family, but Danny kindly tells James that he already has an appointment with Joe to help out on the ranch. Danny tries to contact Roy, but doesn't get an answer, so he goes straight to the ranch to meet Joe and asks how Roy is doing. Joe admitted that Roy had called him last night, but he was asleep and didn't answer the phone. Danny began to worry that Roy was in a situation where he needed help, but Joe tried to reassure him that the call was just one time and that Roy was most likely just drunk. Danny went into the house and joined the women who were making cakes in the kitchen. At that moment Roy appeared and was warmly greeted by his two nieces, Beth and Ashley, and their mother Laura. Danny goes to the stables to inform Joe of Roy's arrival, but Joe is immediately displeased upon discovering that Roy is enjoying himself eating cake with his wife and children instead of meeting him directly at the stables. Joe continues to swear, calling Roy a bumfighter who only came to borrow money. When Roy came to the cage and heard Joe's words, Joe unhesitatingly made his stance clear before Roy's eyes, making Roy regret having come. Danny tries to persuade him, and Roy offers Danny to join him in his job, namely delivering goods across the steel border. Danny agreed after Roy explained that this job would only last three to four days on the trip, so Danny could ask someone to replace him at the base. During their journey, Roy takes Danny to an underground fighting arena run by his friend, where they witness an exciting fight between Barney Boy and Big Duke. Barney initially takes the lead with spectacular boxing techniques, but once Big Duke gets a moment, he grabs Barney by the neck and slams him to the floor, knocking him out and dead on the spot. Roy was impressed by the Big Duke's ferocity and was quickly attracted to fighting him in a double bonus fight, where the winner would take all the betting money and bonuses, with the knockout having to occur in the first round. A fierce battle ensued between the two underground fighters, but when Roy got the chance, he used his signature necklock technique to make Big Duke surrender and throw him into the pool, winning the fight. The next day, they continued their journey and arrived at point A to pick up the cargo, where they met Polly, Julian's confidant and family member. Polly invites Roy in to show him the cargo packed in the drink box and when Roy hesitates, Polly opens the contents of the drink to reveal that it contains diamonds, while the drink only serves as a cover. Polly reminds Roy of the serious consequences he will face from Julian if the diamonds do not arrive by the specified time, and gives Roy a piece of paper with the coordinates of the drop-off location for their guidance. On their way, Roy and Danny stopped briefly at a local grocery store to rest and get some canned drinks, while Danny went to the bathroom to pee. Suddenly, a group of masked and heavily armed men arrive in front of the shop and damage Roy's truck to steal it, while others rain bullets on the shop. Roy hid behind a table for cover, while the shop owner quickly grabbed his rifle and vowed to fight the robbers, but he was shot as soon as he left the shop. 
Roy ran out of the shop but only to find that his truck had been taken away by the robbers, so they immediately used the shop owner's car to chase the robbers. Roy took a shortcut and managed to find his truck parked in the middle of the road, but all the diamonds were gone. Danny is still confused and wonders why they were shot at, but gets no answer. Roy takes the items left in the truck and they return to the car to continue the chase. When they approached the robbers in the middle of the desert, Roy gave Danny his gun and told him to shoot, but the robbers return fire with more sophisticated rifles, causing their car to be thrown off the road. Danny becomes increasingly curious about what is really going on, and he presses Roy for an explanation, so Roy reveals that the cargo contains diamonds worth millions of dollars. Later that evening, the police arrive at the grocery store to begin an investigation into the murder of the store owner. From the evidence they found at the scene, Detective Johnson and Detective Garcia believed that the perpetrator was not an ordinary truck driver, but someone with professional skills. Detective Johnson decided to go to another location where the truck was found. There, he finds a folded paper in the truck's glove compartment, which may contain an important clue in the investigation. The next day, the robbers take the stolen diamonds to a small warehouse, where it is revealed that Polly is the mastermind behind all the robberies. Meanwhile, Roy and Danny continue to trek across the desert, increasingly convinced that they will face serious consequences from Julian. Roy also suspects that the robbers may have been tracking the diamonds for a long time, making the situation even more dangerous. On the other hand, Joe had just returned to his house after leaving, but when he entered the house, he was very surprised to see that the house was a mess and there was no sign of his wife and two daughters. Joe immediately calls Danny to tell him about the events at his house, and Roy also chimes in, ensuring that he knows who did it and vowing to bring his wife and daughter back safely. Joe angrily promises to kill anyone who hurts his family. When Roy receives a call from Julian asking about diamonds, Roy decides to put his phone on speaker so Joe can hear the conversation. Roy tries to explain to Julian what really happened on the day of the robbery, but Julian insists that he just wants the diamonds back and threatens to hurt his family if the diamonds are not returned within 48 hours. After the conversation with Julian ended, Joe asked Danny to send him the coordinates of his location, then he headed to the basement where he kept a large stash of guns, grabbing several rifles and ammo, getting ready for revenge. Danny is initially very angry at Roy for bringing his family into this, and he leaves Roy. However he returns moments later after realizing that they must unite to face the criminals. When Joe arrived at the appointed location, he angrily beat Roy, teaching him a lesson for the wrong he had done to his family. Joe then asks Roy to try to remember something that might be a clue about where they can find the criminals. The next day, the three brothers arrive at a seaside house known as the Palazzo Mansion. Not wasting any time, Joe immediately entered the mansion and defeated several guards outside. Then they divided positions, Joe and Roy would go inside, while Danny served as a sniper to protect them from a distance. Roy tries to climb the roof, but is almost caught by one of the guards, but Danny swiftly fired a precise shot, knocking the guard to the ground to save Roy. At the same time, Polly arrives at the Palazzo Mansion dancing around celebrating his victory over the diamond he managed to control. He entered a room where Julian was accompanied by two women, which made Julian very unhappy with Polly's sudden arrival and demanded a reasonable excuse for his impudence. Polly ignored him, and he coldly drew his gun and quickly killed the two women accompanying Julian. Polly then states that he will take over all the family businesses from now on, and asks Julian to leave the Palazzo family estate, stating that Julian is not a real member of the family. Julian admitted that he was adopted by Polly's family, but he said that he loved his adoptive parents more than Polly's family gave them, and this is why they trusted Julian with their family legacy. At that moment Polly's attention is diverted by the commotion going on outside, where Roy and the thugs are engaged in a shootout, and Julian uses the opportunity to grab Polly's gun before knocking it to the floor with a few blows. After defeating several thugs, Joe goes inside and comes face to face with Julian, challenging him to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Julian quickly gets the better of Joe, calling himself arrogantly the King of Diamonds and the Real Lady. But Polly wakes up from his stupor and shoots Joe, then kills Julian with several shots, knocking him into the pool. Afterwards, the criminals take Roy to a location around the mine, where he is forced to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with one of Polly's men, with the promise that his family will be freed if Roy wins the fight. Danny meets Joe inside who turns out to be alive thanks to the bulletproof vest he was wearing, and finds out where the criminals took Roy and his family, and Danny immediately calls James to ask him to join their mission, which James is immediately interested in joining. The three of them end up going to the nearby mine palazzo where the family is being held hostage, ready to face the criminals and end it all. A fierce fight ensued between Roy and one of the criminals, and Roy struggled hard against the criminal's fighting techniques which made him tired, but when he had the moment, he used a necklock to break the criminal's neck, ending his life. Meanwhile, James accurately shot one by one the criminals near Polly, and the presence of the helicopter made Polly panic and run away, but ordered his men to catch the sniper. Annie asks James to cover from behind while he charges forward, but unfortunately, one of the thugs gets to James who has no cover. Danny tries to scream at him, but the villain is quicker and kills James, angering Danny who then retaliates for James's death. Polly tries to escape with two of his men, but Joe finds them and quickly kills both of Polly's men, leaving Polly alone. 
Just as Joe is about to kill Polly, his gun runs out of bullets, so they engage in unarmed physical combat. Joe manages to tire Polly out in hand-to-hand -hand combat and when he nearly kills Polly, the police arrive and order Joe to hand Polly over to the authorities. And how the film ends, the family is finally reunited in happiness. The police thank Roy, Danny, and Joe for helping them catch Polly and his group, who have been on the run for years. Roy decides to return to the ranch and help Joe for a while, reconnecting their family ties. The film closes with the scene of the three brothers riding a horse to their childhood place, ending the story with a touch of family harmony and unity.